In our previous video, we have looked into JSON, how it works, where we use it most, and main syntactic principles of how to put together a correct JSON file. In this video, we're going to look into YAML file. YAML and JSON are sometimes used interchangeably as a configuration file format, although some platforms prefer to use specifically JSON or specifically YAML. YAML stands for yet another markup language. It has a bit funny abbreviation, but yet it's the abbreviation that has been used forever. And the extension that YAML mostly has is .yaml. As you may see on my screen, this is an example YAML file. The first thing that we see when we compare it to JSON is that it's less verbose. It uses indentation, spaces for indentation. Please remember that, not tabs, but spaces. It doesn't use curly braces or square braces as JSON does on many occasions. It prefers to use simplicity when using different symbols in order to put together its syntax. It still can represent different data types. It can represent scalars such as strings, for example, here, my name, my application. This is a string and we don't have double quotes about around this string compared to JSON. It can present numbers. We can see port number 3306. It can present booleans. Debug is false. This is a boolean. We don't need double quotes around booleans as well, but suffice it to mention in JSON, we don't need double quotes around booleans either. It also can present sequences. For example, there are three dependencies and we present dependencies using a dash, dependencies, Python, Flask, and Redis. Sometimes strings can be located on different lines in order for, for better readability, of course. And in that case, we can use uh, different symbols, one of which is straight vertical line in order to let YAML know that page breaks should be Preserved. As I said, it can use arrays for in order to create hierarchy within the data. So one key has separate values, for example, and it also has comments and comments are marked with a hash symbol. It's language agnostic, meaning that whatever programming language your program supports, either programming language can be used to parse YAML file. The most common utilization of YAML files or not the most common, but rather the type of utilization that many people heard about is Docker. So whenever we try to create a new container in Docker, the configuration of the container is put together as a YAML file. You may see here that for a Docker configuration, Docker container configuration, we should always have a file called docker-compose. And you can see that here, an extension that we have is YML. And you might ask, but it's, it should be YAML. Why is it YML? Well, Docker decided to simplify the type of extension for YAML. However, whether it's YAML or it's YML, both are accepted and both are fine. Again, in order to create any container in Docker, you need to have a configuration file that will tell Docker program what type of container you want and what are the properties of the containers that you're trying to create. For example, here in front of you, you have an example Docker configuration file. It's called docker-compose.yaml. So with let Docker know that we would like to create a container with version 3.8, what services we would like to this container to have, and what databases we would like to attach to the container. Although many people associate YAML with Docker specifically, there are several different areas where YAML format is widely used. Some of them are Kubernetes config files. So Kubernetes is a software program that is used to manage Docker containers, to manage many, many Docker containers. So the most common ideology that is used with Kubernetes is if Docker is a container on a, sh on a ship, Kubernetes is a ship that takes these containers through a certain journey. So Kubernetes is used to manage those containers. CI CD pipelines, which are very often put together by DevOps engineers, also use YAML configuration files. And also Ansible playbooks as the configuration files use YAML format. I will not be going into what Ansible playbooks do, but you can easily Google that to have a better idea. Next, another important application area of YAML files that I cannot not mention is Swagger specs for RESTful APIs. You might ask, what is Swagger spec for RESTful APIs? So to start with, I have a whiteboard video about web APIs. You can watch it by following this link. All APIs are put together in a Swagger file. Swagger file is nothing but a text file or YAML file for RESTful APIs that contains information of those APIs in a structural 
matter. It's similar to API database where we have e information about each API and we have specific fields that we fill in order to have a structured presentation of that information. So far we have talked about many pros of YAML, but are there any cons? Well, as with many things in life, there are cons, especially when we compare YAML with uh, JSON, as people often do, because these are two most commonly used configuration formats. YAML is more prone to errors and debugging of those errors takes longer as compared to JSON. Why? Well, because YAML relies heavily on space-based indentation in order to understand the hierarchy of key value pairs, as you can see on this video. And whenever we make any error with indentation, it's very difficult to debug because you basically have to count indents to understand where is what. And any missed space can result in massive errors in the document. So it's tricky to debug. YAML can be converted into JSON very easily, whereas conversion of JSON to YAML, while possible, it will take more time. Compared to JSON, YAML is more flexible, if you will. However, when we try to parse JSON files, they are parsed faster than YAML files. The reason for that is YAML, again, has lighter indentation, lighter syntactic principles, because it's more human readable. And that makes it harder for programming languages to parse those files. Whereas JSON is, while human readable, has more syntactic rules in order to have more predefined structural form of presenting the information. That's why when we try to read and parse YAML files, the time that we spend to parse them or programming language, CPU, spends to parse them is usually higher compared to their JSON counterpart. Just like with JSON, we can and we should validate YAML files before we decide to do anything with them. Before we try to create container with Docker, it's best to validate it in order not to deal with errors later on. There are a couple of ways of validating YAML file. One of them is validating it online. Validating it online is very straightforward. You should just Google YAML online validator, similar what we did with JSON. And if for JSON, it's JSON lint. For YAML, we have its counterpart, which is YAML lint. What I did is I copied our example file and I'm going to paste it here and run go. So as you can see, it's valid YAML. Now, what if I try to delete one of the indents? Imagine I forgot to add it. So for example, here for name, we have two spaces, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the spaces so that indentation is sort of wrong at the moment and name comes right after app, which makes it make no sense because app is a key and the value is a key as well, which is name. And there is no indentation and there is no value for app. I'm gonna go ahead and click go. And as you may see, this resulted in several errors because now it doesn't understand why environment is intended like it does, why name is not indented, and how come we have two indents for version, we have dependencies and database. So just one indent that we have forgotten to add resulted in several errors during validation. I'm gonna go ahead, add two indents again and run go. And now it's valid YAML again. As I said, it takes more time to debug larger files because each indent is counted and logic applied to it to understand whether it's correct syntax or not. If you wish, you can also try to validate it using command lines. And in fact, many programmers do that because it's just faster for them. We had JQ command to validate JSON. And for YAML, we have YQ command. So YQ eval, which intuitively stands for evaluate. And in double quotes, you need to add the name of the file. I have two files here in my directory, and I'm gonna go ahead and add example.yaml in double quotes. And I'm gonna run enter. It output the YAML file that you currently see in my file, meaning that everything is fine. What if I go ahead and delete two indents for name again and try, well, first I need to save the file and try to validate it again. I'm clearing my terminal and I'm running yq eval example.yaml. And here we go. I received an error saying that bad file example.yaml, yaml line three, mapping values are not allowed in this context. Meaning that please look at line three, something is wrong. And everything changed its color, meaning that indentation affected the whole file. I'm gonna add indentation back. I'm gonna run command save and run the command again to see if anything changed. Well, now it looks like a correct file. What I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna do this quick exercise for docker dash compose YAML. So let's run YQ without any changes for docker file, YQ eval. Here I am adding docker compose 
and everything looks fine. Okay, I'm gonna clean my terminal and now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove key of image and I'm gonna go ahead and save my file. After I save my file, I'm gonna run the command again and apparently removing key didn't affect our file. What I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna return the key and I'm gonna play with indentation a bit. For example, I'm gonna delete two indentations of vol volume, meaning that it will come right after web. I'm gonna run the command again and it's accepted again because this indentation does make sense in terms of YAML. Web and volumes are considered as two different key value pairs now instead of volumes coming under web. But should I try to create a contain Docker container with this indentation, it will not go through because volumes key value pair must come under web key. What does it teach us? It teaches us that for configuration file, we shouldn't only rely on YAML syntax itself, which is basically the foundation, one of the most important parts before we can even create the configuration. But the second step on what we have to rely is specific software's configuration syntax. So what Docker or Kubernetes as a software expect us to have in the configuration file? This is the second step that you need to think about before you deploy containers before you put together configuration files. This was a quick overview of YAML file type that is most commonly used for configuration files. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel. Your help is very important to me to keep my channel afloat and to make YouTube algorithm notice my channel. Thank you for being with me today and have a nice day. Bye.